Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. And this is going to be a practical exercise that you can do, which um, means the recording won't be very long. So... Basically, I mean, this also can be used for, it's a stress relief exercise. It can also be used for pain relief as well, okay? Because it's focusing on a feeling, a physical sensation. So it's going to be, you can use it for one or the other. So I will say it's stress Stress and pain relief. Uh, I hope that makes sense because I know there's a lot of people that will be thinking, well, I'm not listening to this for pain relief. But it's the same process as it would be uh, for pain. So the reason I'm including the word pain and even mentioning this is because it can perhaps benefit more people and to give you a little history of myself I started off doing pain relief that was my interest that was my if you want to use the word specialization that was what I did I used to offer a free pain relief service in the town that I lived back in 2006 and I started off visiting people in their homes and then eventually I rented out a therapy room and people used to come to me. So the part of the process really, I mean with pain relief, reduce stress reduces pain. Increase relaxation reduces pain. So it's something that I realised quite early on through practice, practical experience. And basically relax, and it's an obvious thing, relaxation and stress cannot live in the same space. I don't mean that, you know, you, you can feel relaxed in one part of your body and stressed or pain in another part of course but in the same space as in your left knee for example your left knee can feel tense tension stress pain or it can feel relaxed calm loose free it can't be both, it can't be tense and relaxed. It can be either, uh, and that is your choice, generally. I know I say that, I don't mean that in a flippant way. Um, you know, chronic pain conditions can, you know, seem out of our almost a hurdle too far you know for some people and it does sometimes it does for me with my, with my lower back but I have to remember that actually the fact is that our mindset the things I say to myself the attitude even affects the physical feelings that you experience then you may question well why am I talking about physical experience or you know anxiety and stress it's in my it's an emotional thing which is fair enough it's also a physical thing as well you know it's uh, it manifests itself physically quite often through tension, often through pain as well. 
Some people get migraines, headaches. Other people get cramped muscles, which is painful. Tense shoulders and tense neck. That's painful. It's, it might not be, you might not class that as chronic pain, because it isn't. You know, it's pain, but it's, it's not due to an injury, which uh, has healed up, but for some reason the pain is still there. Or through an illness like fibromyalgia or arthritis, things like that. So, this is something that can be used for both. And I want, I'm intending to do more of these recordings in the future because it gives me an opportunity to also share the pain relief techniques that I have or you know that I've done in the past and that will be useful I hope this makes sense um, it's not that I'm not, not using this platform just to help people with pain because I know this is the relaxation for stress and anxiety but it's the same process so it would seem I'll give, I'll give an example um, for the bipolar, I take uh, Depakote medication. Depakote is also used for epilepsy. So, with a lot of other medications, it can be used for different things. It doesn't take away its validity. You know, you you wouldn't say, well, no, it should only be used for epilepsy. Don't use it for anything else. So if a technique or medication helps for more than one condition, which a lot of them do, in the same way, a therapeutic healing process can be useful for more than one thing. So a technique for reducing a headache could also be used for reducing the pain in someone's foot. But that same technique could also be used for relieving tension in your shoulders or you know so or vice versa a pain relief technique for your hands could be used to calm your mind so these are things that you know I know it's a, a big a bit of a long winding on introduction but sometimes it's important just to, you know, to for me to be sensible for a few minutes and try to explain where I'm coming from with this so that you know that, first of all, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, secondly, this is something that I've been doing a long time and it's also something I've studied. Uh, I've really studied pain, chronic pain, not just how to help people reduce it, but the whole science behind pain, behind, you know, how it all kind of comes together and, you know, all the spinal cord and referred pain and all these different things. My most important thing that I was more interested in than anything was how to reduce the levels of pain and in the process I realized that it helps reduce tension, the techniques, helps re you know increase relaxation. But even by just focusing on increasing relaxation, the chronic pain reduces. So, I hope that made sense. You may have fallen asleep by now, but hopefully not. Uh, I won't do this long introduction on every recording I do for the 
stress and pain relief. So I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna call these probably just stress and pain relief. And maybe a name for the technique. Okay, so here we go. Now, let me think, what can we do? The I don't know where your stress levels are. So what I'm going to do is focus, ask you to focus on that part of your body. Okay? So... I realise this you know, this stress is probably not just in one place. And if you're listening this listening to this for pain, focusing on just that part of your body where the pain is and you know, just uh there may be other parts of your body that also have pain. So for someone with arthritis they may be focusing on, I might ask you to focus on one hand or your left knee, as an example. But you may have issues with your ankles or your elbows or your shoulders. So we're just going to focus on one part, okay? But that, in your mind, what happens... And the changes in that part of your body starts to generalize to other parts because the other parts of your body, whether it's stress or pain that's being held there, is listening. They're listening to that part. They're watching and observing what's going on. Because they want to feel relaxed, comfortable, calm and loose. And they welcome the healing that is being provided and the opportunity for you to feel happier within yourself. To feel more positive. Now... I'm going to ask you to focus on a part of your body which has either pain or stress or both. The part that feels most prominent. For me it would be my lower back. Although my lower back now for some reason is actually feeling more relaxed than it was before I started talking which is strange do you do you, do you have that as well I don't know it's just you know I'm preparing to do something where I can relax and I'm sort of you know getting myself ready for it we're 14 minutes into the recording and I already feel relaxed huh well, it's not a bad thing, is it? So, I'd like you to focus on a part of your body. And I'd like you to do almost like an outline of the body. Just do, uh, in your mind, sort of draw a circle or a shape around that part your body whether it's a small part or a large part now I'd like you to as you focus on that part of your body gauge what number it is on the stress pain level between uh, 1 being nothing 10 being the highest it could be 
on the discomfort level. And just notice it and and I guess if we'd have done and checked that discomfort level 10 minutes ago, it may have been different, I don't know. Now, as you focus back on that part of your body, I'd like you just to, in your mind, give it a different color. So maybe we could start off with green. So that area of your body and your mind within the walls of the outline that you've already made, you can make that green. And if you choose, you can change change the tint of green. So maybe it could be the, the color of grass. Or maybe it could, I mean, grass has got different colors. The standard grass in your garden would be different to the grass that you see on a tennis pitch, which would again be different to the grass that you'd see on a golf course. Maybe you have an item in your house which is green. I've got green curtains. Maybe you can just notice how the green changes. Perhaps you could even make it fluorescent green, you know, really bright green. Now I'd like you to give it a different color. This time we're gonna go for purple. Change the color to purple. Just notice how it feels when you change that color to purple and just focus on that color. Maybe you can think of different versions of the color purple. I'm not great with colors. I'm trying to think of, I suppose you could have it brighter you can have darker purple, or you can have lighter purple. I suppose a good example of that would be butterflies. You could see 10 different butterflies, all with purple on their wings, yet they have, it just looks different. Now you can change that color again. This time, let's change it to blue. And as you focus on that blue color, representing that area which you've outlined, you can play with that blue because of course, just like the other colors, there's lots of different shades of blue. In fact, I would say it's one of the easier ones to change the color because there are lots of different shades. I mean, you can have dark blue, you can have really, really light blue that's almost, to me, almost green in a sense. When it gets really light, you got the the color of a blue ocean, which is very different to the color of a blue sky. As you focus on that blue, and what you might notice is when you're focusing on it, and I say things like blue ocean, the sea and the sky, and you might start to see that kind of activity in 
that area that you're focusing on. So maybe almost like little waves or the blue sky, you might say, you might see uh, some clouds going over in that part of your body. Now we're gonna change it to orange. Changing that area within the outline to orange. And just notice how different that feels. Because there is a kind of a definite, I suppose a feeling connected to colors that we have. We've all got our favorite colors. And there's no way in the world of me knowing what yours are. Although I could probably guess within about two minutes just by reading off all the different colors, which I'm not gonna do. And just like the other colors, orange has different shades. It can be very, very, very bright. It can be very light. It can also be very dark, kind of dark orange. Maybe a bit like the sky uh, at night sometimes, you know, when you get that orange sky. Which is different from the sun, completely different texture and color. And then you've got the color. In fact, you've got different shades of color for fruit that are orange. You know, you've got oranges and tangerines, different color skin, both orange. Carrots, different, different type of orange as well. Marmalade different type of orange. Ask Paddington Bear. So there's different types of orange. I mean, you've only got to look at, uh, I guess like a Halloween, like pumpkins and the different fruits, lots of different fruits and vegetables that are orange, that look different. Maybe still orange, but have different tones to them. And you can actually manipulate the tones. You can change it. And do that now. Change it and play with it. You can make it dark orange, or you can make it light orange. You can make it tangerine orange. You can make it carrot orange. You can make it however you want it to be. Because you can change that color now to yellow. Just change it to yellow. Notice the feelings Again, you've taken control of that area. So you've now got it as yellow. And there's lots of different types of yellow. I won't bother going through the whole thing again because you know that. There's different types of yellow. and You can change the color to just test it. Maybe you make it dark yellow or make it really, really light or really bright yellow. And yellow is a very positive color, a very, I would almost say healing color. I'm 
I'm going to ask you to do now is to choose your own colour. I think my next colour would be pink. So, but you choose your colour that you want. And it could be a mixture of different colours. It doesn't matter. You can, Even if you wanted to, you can have it as a rainbow. So change the colour now to the one that you choose now. Now mine's pink, as I said. I like the I like the colour pink. It's very comforting to me. So as you focus on the colour that you've chosen because you're now you've now taken complete control is you you always had control anyway but this is you've now taken it on the changing the color whatever you've got you can play with it you can make it darker you can make it brighter lighter you can also intermingle other colours if you were to choose. You can allow that that area and that colour to maybe move around, to be free. And now I'd like you to change it again to a different colour. It doesn't have to be different just different from the one you've just had. You can go back to a, a colour from before or choose another colour. It's totally up to you. Change that colour now. And breathe into that colour. Breathe into that area that you're focusing on. Noticing the changes and how you feel in that part of your body. And now I'd like you to focus back on the scale, but like before, you know, 1 to 10 or 10 down to 1. And just notice where it is on the scale. Notice how it's changed. And if you're happy with how it's changed, you can open your eyes. If you choose to continue... You can think of some different colours and keep going until you're satisfied. And that's it. Notice how it feels. And remember, you can do this as often as you choose. And I'd be interested to hear how you got on. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy.